I think the noble Indian behind us is doing what we're doing, which is looking all around the Mercer Museum. It's pretty amazing, Dr. Lori. I know. Isn't this fabulous? <laughs> that's Not only those great tobacco store or cigar store Indians, but everything that's here, and we've got all of it. Well, they've got all of it here at the Mercer Museum. What an unbelievable location. We're in Doylestown. Describe this, Dr. Lori. Oh my gosh, you're at the Mercer Museum, the one and only Mercer Museum. Here at the Mercer Mile in Doylestown, free parking, discounts on admission for kids and seniors, open all the time except three days a year. Please come and see this wonderful it's exhibit. It's unbelievable, seven floors. Now, if you're coming to this museum full. or any other museum, a couple of things to know about going to a museum. Yeah, you know, I know you've all been to museums and you know, you know I've worked in museums for much of my career. There's some don'ts, Carol. One of the don'ts is don't bring your biggest pocketbook to a museum, you know? Because they're lethal weapons in museums. You don't want to have big bags in museums. Most museums will take them from you and have you put them into a locker or something, lock them away during your visit. Bring something small so you are protecting the object. Don't right. touch a thing. Not a thing. Don't touch a thing. Nothing. No, and nothing. Nothing. Yeah, because that's why you always have gloves on because right. you're allowed to touch things in museums, but the rest of us aren't, so don't touch anything. That's right. Don't touch anything. You're not, you know, it's not for your hands because they can attract dirt and deteriorate the objects. We're trying to preserve them for future generations and be comfy. Yeah, boy. Right. My, my heels here, gosh, I'm already tired <laughs> standing on, you know, cement yeah. floors, so don't wear shoes like I ended up wearing. Right, so okay. sneakers are good, dress casually, and cool. Okay, great. All right, now, in this Mercer Museum, these are all the artifacts that you'd find in 19th century America, I guess, in one fell swoop. You know, Henry Chapman Mercer was an eclectic collector. He collected all different types of things, and when we think of the study of people, history as the study of people, he was interested in all of those things that people made. One of his big, major parts of this collection, of course, are tools architectural elements and elements that relate to genre or everyday life so you're gonna see the general store and some architectural hardware and, and all and, and of this fire engine now imagine in Bucks County having to put out a fire with this thing showing up at some point the next day probably <laughs> Well, uh, hopefully but, sooner than that. Well, but yeah. yeah, but yeah. So, and wonderful, you know, intact pieces. So you want to think about that tools when you're collecting tools will relate to a particular industry. So there's a great printmaking industry exhibits here. Um, there are ones that relate only to a particular type of the Industrial Revolution for the most part. Grist so, mills and, of course, this great uh, sweep here for the to, well. Yeah, imagine yeah. something that long and then that long to go down and get a bucket of water. I hope they weren't trying to fight fires one bucket at a time like that. If somebody's collecting tools, because a lot of, you know, older relatives pass down the loved tools, what are the good ones to save? Oh, save the planer, save the screwdrivers, save the drills. Um, most people will have axes and hammers and such. Remember that we many women will outlive their husbands, so they end up with the tools. Right. And many women go, I'm getting rid of the tools first, and they can have real value. So it's in the workshop or in the garage that was mom, grandpoms, pops, or pops. You want to make sure that you don't just automatically get rid of those. All right. And they may look like they've been used because they're tools. Well, exactly. And they're supposed to be used. And most collectors are fine with that. Okay. Because that's one of the things. They, I guess collectors generally don't want just a whole bunch of used stuff, but something like a tool that's right. supposed to be is different. Well, be specific to an industry, remember that, right? You want to collect in that particular type of category and look for good condition. The better the condition, the, the better the condition, of course, the better the value. Okay, e even if it is a tool. Even if it is a tool. You know, that tool still has to work, right? It might be a hand made piece. A lot of them are hand fashioned because a lot of folks who are, you know, work in workshops are actually making them hand fashioned. Not unlike the hand fashioned weather vane that you see here. Of, of course, Lucy, who helped to build, we want to focus on Lucy because you love do, horses. I do. A weather vane, actually, um, to tell you, of course, about wind and about what the weather conditions were, would usually in the 18th and 19th century be on a main civic building, the town square, the town church or such. And in Bucks County, we've got lots of great weather vanes, too, of 
very high value. Lucy is coveted because she actually helped with the construction of the buildings of Font Hill and the Mercer Museum. I know. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. This is, again, the Mercer Museum, and you cannot believe how fabulous this place is. Doylestown, we easy to get to. <laughs> okay, and we'll, uh, we'll see you next time with more information out of here.